In this video, let's take a look at replacing the timing belt for the Nissan VG33E engine and also the Nissan VG30 engine. So this engine we're working on is the Nissan VG33E engine. The first thing we want to do is make sure the crankshaft sprocket that will be this mark right here, this dot, is aligned with the marking on the casting. Now when you do so, you might want to remove number one cylinder spark plug and just take a screwdriver and put it in there because you want to make sure that cylinder is at top dead center. Second, you want to align this cam sprocket right here on the right side to that backing plate marking right there. So I have put these paint marking here. The factory has one down here. You will be able to notice a dot in the sprocket tooth right here to align it with the cam plate right there. Now over here, when we take a look at this, you can see it's not truly aligned because this sprocket is a little off when you look at it. Right, take a look at it straight. You see how it's a little off? So this sprocket here will have some tension on it because the camshaft is sitting on the valve ready for opening it so when you lift the wrench for turning this cam sprocket it will have the tendency to bounce back in some case right now we have it perfectly aligned now you will know when this is perfectly aligned because you have to check the distributor making sure it's pointing the spark plug wire number one that's spark plug number one so we could see that rotor should be pointing here which is what we want now let's go ahead and install this timing belt. You can see we have a brand new timing belt tensioner. And what I like to do is to zip tie that spring to the stud right there because during the timing belt operation, sometimes this spring could slip off over there and just dangle. It will not destroy anything. So you will need a tool to put in there. That's a Torx. So you can move this back and forth for getting it onto the timing bell. Now I have two timing belt replacement that I've done already. This one is a Gates, I could tell from the line. And this one is the factory OEM from Nissan. This one has almost 130,000 miles. And this one has approximately 70,000 miles. So that maybe 80,000 miles. So you, the vehicle right now has 210,000 miles. Now both of these belts were in the engine for approximately 10 years. Let's take a look at the reverse side. Look at the reverse side of the belt. What you want to look at is this right here. I don't know if the camera is able to get it, but you will have cracks where the tooth is on the belt. So you have to look for that. Now I'm not going to use a Nissan OEM belt. Instead I'm going to use this performance belt. I purchased this belt online. This belt is a little bit heavier than both of those belts. So we could take a look at the features of this belt and you will see how superior it is compared to aftermarket belt. So let's go ahead and install this timing belt for the Nissan VG3300.
felt was made easy for installation. You see this mark here? We'll go align with that mark right there. And as we go down the belt, you can see we have another mark here that will go align with this cam belt. And then the next mark is down here. This is gonna go down with the cam sprocket. During the procedure of installing this belt, you will need to remove this tensioner to get this side to perfectly align with the timing belt. Don't try to stretch this belt around the tensioner by moving it back like that. It's not going to work. So you have to take this tensioner out completely. Once the belt is in position and all the timing mark is aligned with the sprocket, the timing belt and the backing plate, for the right cam and the left cam you will have to go to the crankshaft sprocket and do the same thing by making sure that the mark on the sprocket aligned with the belt you can see a line in the belt there that line is indexed with the mark on the water pump casting. Now for you to successfully do that and maintain that position, you will have to place a stopper under this belt, preventing it from popping out when you're going to be installing that tensioner. Let's take a look at installing the tensioner for the timing belt. So we wanna pull back on this Now pulling back on this timing belt, you want to use your hands, your fingers, you don't want to use any tools because it most likely could damage the belt. Now we have to pay attention to this spring because it's most likely going to get stuck on the side here. So we always want to have that free. Now we slide that timing belt tensioner in position, pull the spring back against its stud, and we want to check the tension on the belt. So you see this tension is a little slack here and up here. So what we want to do now is take our wrench and make the adjustment. What we want to do now is take our wrench and just make fine adjustment for getting the tension of the belt, the top and the bottom, not too tight. So that's good right there. And we have the tension in position. Now we could take our Allen key and place it in here. This is going to give us additional tension on the belt. When we are ready to torque the tensioner nut. So let's get a look at the tension for the belt on the top and the side. So we could still put some more tension into here. And that's good right there. Now we want to take a look at the timing mark. Referencing it from the sprocket with the timing belt line against the backing plate for the right cam. Same thing for the left cam.
and we could see on the sprocket it's the same thing now we can make the adjustment here and tighten the nut for the tension and that finalized the installation of the timing belt with the timing belt finally installed and its tensioner nut lock and torque into position let's get a look at the allen key that's this here and you want to reference the angle so you will have an idea for the tension on the timing belt you don't want to put too much tension on it and you do not want a loose tension now we will replace our front guide guide plate remove this here the stopper from the bottom that was holding the timing belt in position replace the timing belt guide plate now when we put that harmonic balancer onto this crankshaft, this bolt will have to be torqued to 190 foot-pounds. This is going to clamp the harmonic balancer, the guide plate, the timing sprocket, the crankshaft sprocket, to the crankshaft flange. That's where that seal, that oil seal is on. Once this is clamped together, the tendency of this keyway to become damaged will be less likely because most of the force is going to be applied by clamping the fixture together. So this sprocket will place less of a tension or fatigue on the keyway. Now let's go in the video and take a look at the specification for this performance belt that was purchased to replace the aftermarket timing belt. This has complete the timing belt installation. Now let's put on that lower timing belt cover and the upper cover with all the accessories and pulley. Start the engine replace this distributor cap by screwing it down and installing the number one spark plug so when you're going to be torquing this bolt to 190 foot pounds of torque you're going to need to put a rope in there like we've done before for untightening that bolt once you have that rope in there you will be able to turn that bolt and torque it to 190 foot-pounds. So in the beginning of the video you will see how to do that. This is the best way I found for preventing the crankshaft from turning by placing that bolt, by placing that rope into the number one spark plug hole. You will finalize your method with an inspection counting the tooths from here to here should be 40 on the timing belt and from here to down here the crankshaft spark sprocket should be approximately 47 tooths from here to here once you have those number the timing has been set correctly and it's time to start the engine all these bolts, this is a long one, a long one, a short one, a short one, short, short, and then we have the shortest one on the bottom here. You want to make sure you put these Teflon thread sealer on the threads when you're putting these old rusty bolt back in. You want to clean the thread with a wire brush because next time when it's to remove the bolts, you don't want threads to strip out or become busted same thing for over here and here that the tensioner bracket for the power steering and the water pump now take a look at starting the engine with the radiator the cooling fan condenser and all the connection made engine filled with new coolant and new oil let's start this engine before we can start this engine 
one important thing you need to take notice of it's very important it has to do with making the engine last forever is when you start the engine first thing in the day or in the morning after sitting long overnight you want to see this rpm needle jumps to a thousand and between 1500 rpm a instant high rpm of a thousand fifteen hundred will allow the oil pump to prime the engine quickly preventing the engine from rattling in its valve trim and lubricating the engine first thing on the morning if you should start the engine and this rpm needle is to hover below 1000 rpm or around 500 that is bad for the engine because it's getting a low oil pressure eventually as the engine continues running from that low rpm you will notice it gains rpm all the way up to past a thousand in between 1500 there's a problem associated with the vehicle making it giving you that low rpm at startup so like i've said what you want to see is that rpm needle jump to 1000 or 1400 rpm let's try starting so that is our first start and we see how the rpm jump past 1500 it's now early in the morning and the first thing i want to do is start the engine and doing so i'm going to turn the key from the off position straight to on allowing the fuel to prime and then i'm going to crank for a first start let's see where the rpm needle on the gauge will work at so that is a problem we're having with the starter in the video description there are more information on how to service and repair the starter so the problem with the starter is that it has a weak solenoid it's not a factory OEM part it's an aftermarket solenoid so I just want you to see all the lights and the dashboards are on now what I will do sometime is I will put the vehicle in neutral it will allow the flywheel to turn or something to happen to let the solenoid engage the starter bendex gear for starting so that is what we want we want that rpm to jump right up to 1500 rpm because this is going to allow oil pressure to instantly be available in the valve trend but since the valve trend is already gone because this problem this situation did not exist before we will have to replace the rocker arm now in other videos like I said the engine will start at 500 600 rpm and the valve trim will rattle relentlessly until the rpm gets up to where it's at right now and then that noise will go away so by performing the repair we have done to the engine in these series of video we have solved a major problem at one point a mechanic told me that the oil pump might be bad because sometimes the light the oil light will come on when starting the engine and the idle is around 500, 600, 700 RPM. That is the perfect idling I like to set the engine at when you're in stop and go traffic. It's just below a thousand, so it's approximately 900 RPM. That's a good speed for driving the oil pump, maintaining a good pressure. Because if you should jump on the throttle, you will need that oil for lubrication.